Organizational democracy. What is it? What does it really mean? Why does it matter? And what on earth does organizational democracy have to do with an earliest, early 20th century management thinker, theorist, and prophet of management named Mary Parker Follett? Good now to you. And wherever and whenever you are, my name is Ryan Erickson with Red 42. And here with me on the right side of your screen is Niels Flagging. And today we will be discussing and diving in to this lovely, wonderful, and so uh, delicious topic of organizational democracy and the beta codex. So Niels, welcome to the space as you are here with me every week. Thank you for what? allowing me to join again, Ryan. Oh, well, about these well the, doors, the door is always open for you here in, in, our, in our live space. So, um, what, so to start here, the first question is, what do we mean? We, the title of the episode was Democracy at Work. Organizational democracy, one of the most common themes that we talk about in the beta codex what does it mean and, and how did that show up in the beta codex if, if you want to lead with that a little bit we can riff on there mm -hmm. and do you want to start Ryan? well what what do i think it means i i went through in the process of thinking about that democracy again meaning this withness that it is deciding the democracy the first thing okay versus authoritarianism right that that's the polarity so where where is the source of authority is it in the demos in the in the people or is the source of authority in the position and is that this is it for decision making for all of those things is that what is the reason to have power with and with people and decision making with people versus what may seem to be, and, and I hear this a lot when we're talking about democracy, is this, oh, democracy is inefficient. You, you know, it takes too long to make a decision. Everyone has to bop, 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 bop about some yeah. decision Everyone or another. Yeah, deeply depressed these days, right? Well, the whole uh, country is deeply depressed and and uneducated about democracy, right? Well, it, it, it works well, defended. I would have I would have to agree in certain in certain instances. Again, the the public presentation of American democracy is to a certain extent correct in terms of there's not much visible ownership of one's citizenship and involvement involvement in the process. No, that's well. No. Well, I would I would say I'm talking about visible. I'm talking about visibility. Just among people and among folks who. I speak with in informal things is that there's a lament about personal responsibility for process of civic governance. You know, so that that the statistics say there are so few people involved in local government, which has direct impact. Uh, the voting populace is you know, only what a third of people vote. I mean, I don't know the specific statistics, but that theme that theme of citizenship and ownership why we can we can talk about you know america writ large which is fine but in an organization i think in this context res personal responsibility and membership and commitment and citizenship organizational citizenship i think is uh, again far behind where we even are in american culture uh, the because there's been an assumption of that command and control, authoritarian rule, efficiency is prime, is the prime need. And that is, I don't agree. <laughs> I, I, I believe that in the, it is in the relationship between people and it is in the, again, I don't want to tip our hat or tip our hand too early, but the idea of unity, not uniformity. Again, the, the quote from, from Mary Parker Follett, and as her theme will come through, is that um, integration of opinion, integration of dissent into better decisions 
through a democratic process. Okay, so so I went through a lot of stuff there. Given that and what I think democracy means as in opposition to authoritarianism and why that's more important in organizations. Please tear it to shreds, support it to the nth degree, or yeah, yeah, we do, we do not have to agree. But uh, let me let me give you an, an example where um, uh, in America, let's talk a little bit about democracies, democratic societies. So just so that we do not uh, create some sort of vagueness or misunderstanding here, uh, I would I, I have so many great examples, even about America. I mean, I live in Germany now, but I lived in America for about five years, so I I, I know a thing or two about America as well. And American democracy, I think. And of course, I'm a, a, a lifelong student of democracies and American democracy as well. It's one of my great interests, the birth of democracy and so on. Um, but one of the things I would like to remind everyone of is when, when the last elections, uh, national elections happened in America, and of course, the re election results were then questions by the Trumpists and the MAGA extremists. Uh, there were these Giuliani uh, processes, I think, uh, legal processes against election result and the supposed election fraud and so on. And I remember well that uh, the, the 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 citizens actually doing, you know, um, how, how was it called in English, uh, running the local election posts. Yeah, protested against protested against the. Uh, hideous insult that fraud happened in their election. The allegations, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Against the, the global allegation in Georgia, I think there was an, an interesting case where the local people helping citizens, ordinary citizens of all tribes, or Democrats and Republicans and, and, sure. and from all tribes and, and colors and so on, where they said, this is an insult to, uh, to our work as citizens here as election helpers. You know, yeah. as people doing the election work, volunteers, normal people, you know, doing this kind of work in a democracy. So uh, this is very interesting. Citizenry in a democracy involves so many things. It's not just voting. It's not just being in a parliament, being a representative or so, a govern, governor or whatever. It is It is local representation. It is, it is, it is, uh, you know, of course, uh, doing not-for-profit work, you know, uh, doing doing uh, social work and so on. There are literally thousands of facets of democratic voicing, you know, running campaigns, initiatives and so on. So democracy is very, is very vivid and very striving in America. Of course, there's also, yeah, I think the, the mere fact that we are talking about this uh, indicates that there is a lack of public space in which democratic and democracy and citizenship and, and and the options that we have of engaging in democracies are discussed. So, yeah, this is also a forum of, of talking about these things. So, yeah, we're doing, yeah. we're doing our duty here, our democratic duty of discussing the power of citizenry and the facets of the manifold facets, facets of... Uh, yeah, uh, well, the, the facets of citizenship. Citizenship. voting, voting is not enough. Voting is just this. It's just a grain in the democratic process. There are so many other facets. Yeah. Oh, Peter Paul is commenting here. I remember a quote yes. in the inner open space communities that describes the extent of misunderstanding of democracy. U.S. is not a democracy. Somebody said that, apparently. So that's just what the U.S. are a republic of, of yeah, but a republic is a democracy. Not sure what Peter well, wants to express. Well, that that again that's a that's a whole that's a several episode topic around the the what the structure is of the american democracy I and mean, you being a student of it you know we're talking about democratic uh democratically elected representatives uh, to a federal republic yeah. which is divided republic, by the tricamer state yeah yeah a republic is supposedly not a democracy that's bullshit. that's just bullshit. Uh, well modern democracy is always organized in a republic representative is it a representative democracy uh, a direct democracy is a trivial thing to think of and not not a plausible model for 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 today's society so yeah peter thank you for contributing this there's so many misunderstandings around democracy and de at, about democracy as at work of course uh, some people may think sadly that democracy at work mean, means voting bosses or something. There are a few books in German published about democracy at work that can totally confuse and equal democracy at work with voting voting shitty chefs, right? Uh, bosses, I mean, 
Uh, that's hmm. just nonsense. Nonsense. You don't have to vote if you are if you are decentralized, right? The, the, for us at, at the Big Data Codex movement, we understand that democracy, organizational democracy, democracy can only function in decentralization. Command and control means centralization, authoritarian, paternalistic steering, and so on. Dependency, opposite, yeah. Yeah, dependency, yeah. There are so many facets of that, of course, we want to talk about today. Does that still make sense, right? We don't have to agree, yeah. by the way. Oh, yeah, I yeah. He's agreeing, I see, on, in, the, in, the, in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so we we do get to see the chats for those of you who, who are who are live, and um, and we all see. Ah, yeah, the new comments, but Peter, if you post something, it will be displayed here. We never had that. That's great. Okay, let's. Do yeah. That. So Peter, so Peter. Will, okay, yeah. so we'll do this in a way that that Peter will be part of this episode. In, yeah. In in, uh, in virtual if space. So yes. if if he wishes to, now you can say shut it off. But, uh, yeah. So. We so very profoundly that organizational democracy is only possible in a in a in a de decentralized mode of organizing and that's why we call this today in this session the Follettian school of managing or the Follettian school of organizing because very Packer Follett in a way probably was the first to suggest this kind of uh not power over organizing but power with which is right. the democratic stance at work she didn't she used the term decentralization as well by the way interestingly already so she had a pretty thorough understanding of how that would work. Yeah, and and it is um, among the, the the Western world, and you know, from enlightened liber, enlightenment liberalism and the, the the thinkers of that age. You know, we have we, we developed a, a pretty strong structure that has held again even through the the craziness that was twenty twenty. The process held, and there was great and deep dispute which is which is exactly what is supposed to happen and and yeah again depending on where, where you come from and what story you tell yourself and about others whether that was just or not but the process was executed and it and we, we are still here we are not a, a smoking ash of rubble here in in the u.s so US. thank goodness for that yeah. um and of course of brazil had a similar um, as some might might know, I lived in Brazil for twelve years. That that uh, Brazilian, I'm not sure exactly how to call it. Uh, there was something like a storm on uh, a Brazilian institution in Brasilia, the city. Riot, of Brazil. revolt. I, riot, I actually... Yeah, let's say a riot in Brasilia. So, of course, uh, okay, democracies are under fire. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a, a zeitgeist thing, and yeah. it probably comes from from you know uh, we have been too too sloppy. We, we citizens, we the people, we have been um, sloppy Democrats. We have been content with voting. And, and maybe maybe the problem was that um, presidents like, let's say, Clinton, Obama were good enough. It was good enough to vote and, uh, you know, let things happen and mm -hmm. not to get involved. Most of us, many, some of us, many of us. Of course, many many people got involved always. In citizens. Well, there's that, and there's these election organize. There's so many ways to engage. So, well, the, I th I think the the other bit of that that has played in again the the prevalence and strength and persuasiveness of media sources and the pre prevalence of them and the speed of them and and the incentives that accelerate them. Yeah. And if one is not paying strict attention to the principles that they believe in and and just kind of thinking sure. for yourself, thinking for yourself and not just, you know, abdicating your thinking to what you're watching. Sure. You know, even though, all, all, those of, all those of you who are watching this want to think yeah. what we think, that's great. But yeah, yeah. anyway. You know, and and, and by and large, in many, many countries, all, 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 I think everywhere in the world, by now the fascists have become have built their own media empires. I will not mention any American okay. media groups that are so, still doing that. But, well, but all right, all right, right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. The word fascism is one of the most uh, poorly uh, it's thrown around at people from from many places, and I think it's important to make a distinction. And when you say a fascist fascism. Uh, that the fascist Nazi blue, and then then that's immediately going into the othering and the you're a fascist blah blah blah. When you say that, what specifically do you mean in in the context of 
for comparison to democracy. Yeah. Fair, fair, ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it, it should be defined. Yes, you're right. Not just involves, involves disdain for democracy, uh, racism, nationalism, anti-Semitism, all the bad stuff, right? Yeah. Um, understand a, a willingness to destroy democracy, certainly. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a flavor of authoritarianism. I think actual communism is really not uh, a threat nor an issue these days because even the supposed communists like Vladimir Putin are really not communists but fascists. I would say. Um, yeah, is that enough to clarify? Well, I, 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 our viewers might have. By the way, I love. I, there's a great Argentinian movie, Argentina, 1985. Yes, in I only which, recommended that. Guy. Yeah, I recommended it. You didn't watch it yet. It's, it's not brilliant. yet. Um, other, so you get a flavor yeah. of the mm -hmm. fight for democracy. I mean, our, our demo all our democracies were built by people who fought for them. I mean, the American founding fathers sure. were, uh, were uh, fought, and, mm -hmm. and 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 when I visited Philadelphia and heard about the story that somebody rode on a horse or so for a week or two to get to Philadelphia for the for the critical vote for the. A constitutional vote or whatever it was. Mm. Uh, so people really sacrificed, made made, made very uh, strong sacrifices to to build our democracies, and 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 we, of course we and I well, as there we we kind of often fool ourselves that to defend a democracy, voting correctly is enough. Which well, with that, it, maybe maybe this also I, I I like what you brought there in terms of the personal commitment to uh, participating in governance and yeah. that the pop and you know not populist but the people popular participation in government and that in what we see as you know as as a fascist uh, authoritarian kind of structure is that no we we know what's best here at the top we're going to tell you what's best we're going to propagandize here and there we're going to so you the public may only support us in the way that that we choose to do things because the government owns means of production the that business entwinement with government is very obscure and uh, obtuse not transparent uh, that but again that's not what i wanted to bring in that the idea of individual responsibility to produce artifacts that that articulate what this nation is about a declaration of a pen of of independence a sure. constitution that yes. outlines the right and that is flexible it is flexible in the context of other structures that you have representation you have representation in multiple ways to separation uh, to of power free press separation of power protest yes and and those yeah. things are established Peace. through through and you know, you can you can go down rules versus principles and 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 how how granular you are depending on the size of what you're doing yes. um and i and i think getting back to the beta codex also mm -hmm. in this i think those, those ideas of principles of of uh you know agreement and, and interaction that that that's hard work yes to, yes. to create that side and that was hard work all the the constitutional convention and and all of that and obviously the, the revolutionary war and civil wars that happened in conflict but when so my mind flipped you know and, and a better understanding of that and this is to get this better understanding from someone who is who has not born here and grew up in the educational system of america so one might think it's crazy but you shared the 12 angry men movie i had never seen it and seeing people in, in in such deep conflict and one person stands up for i i believe in the principles of the process we are here regardless of the the valence and level of dissent with that is here to wrestle with this issue and seek unity and integration and and the truth as best we understand it based on what we know and and that that came so that was that flipped my head and said oh how might we apply this process in a relatively small group to to respect each other's authority 
respect each other's ability and skill and and decide based on that mastery together and and not just fold to the most charismatic person but to really seek deep truth and direction connecting this with purpose i mean i'm going to go through all 12 principles when i talk about this and yes. the 12 principles of the beta codex are a manifesto for democracy right absolutely so it the beta codex distinguishes itself from 12 principles, the manifesto for non-democratic organizing, command and control yeah. Taylorism, if you want to say so. Exactly. So, yeah, whenever I hear that, oh, beta, but beta, is, it just seems to be an option and it seems to be limited. No, it allows for all ways of democracy, democratic organizing, I mean, in organizations, right? And yeah. you, I, I always understand, the, uh, always understood that nobody wants alpha because it's undemocratic it's authoritarian paternalistic fascist even if, if we want to provoke a little bit <laughs> just in case we would want to provoke a little bit yeah um, right. no, but it's very 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 uh, very elementary to the beta codex that it opposes authoritarianism it's very it's it's nothing more and nothing less than defining what's decent what's democratic what's what's humane organizing what what is a the res lean right respect for people deep yeah. respect for people respect for the human the and, human and dignity who, of it who, 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 well, who it, it, and, everybody and knows all, that, i suppose if they do not want it they don't understand it yet you know yeah the, the, well, and the, this is and again the the other issue i, I think i again bashing a little bit being too generic about the the abdication of one's agency say oh you know I vote for this guy and he'll make all the decisions or she'll make all the decisions or whoever I, you know or you know i i've i've done my part by by clicking the the lever or pressing the button and the um in a way was, with, course, in a way of course democratic ways of organizing they mean that we the people make decisions not them not the managers not the yeah. top not you know the ceos but that everybody makes important decisions uh and uh, around the daily business but beyond as well so this kind of distribution of decision making into the organization uh, through decentralization through self-organized team structures that is uh essential to uh organizational democracy which again is not about republican representation or rep yeah, yeah. democratic representation is not really what's the core the key that that's where that's where you cannot just compare organizational democracy with societal right democracy. it's, they are different, it's different it, thing, right well it's a different if it's a different sphere of activity there's a different purpose different there's, expressions there's... of democracy you yeah, right uh, democracy finds a different expression in organizations than in our societies yeah, yeah? through yeah. different mechanisms uh and, and for example, one of the very democratic elements of, of beta organizations of decentralization is that the periphery owns the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not a centralized treasury that is, you know, or taxes are collected the CFO or, yeah. or the CEO who has the money and bestows, uh, bestows it upon underlings and projects mm -hmm. and investments or whatever uh, through the budget. So <laughs> the, the office the of management and budget, you know, the alpha office, the, right? Exactly. The unity of decision making authority and responsibility for value creation and having the money that is the essence of decentralization as we understand it in beta codex yeah? like in huddles bank and where the, the branches say the branch is the bank mm. the branches make the profit uh the branches also have to cover credit losses yeah if the mm. bank if they give a if a bad if a credit turns sour they also have to assume the the cost of the lost of the defaulted but the, the branch the branch takes responsibility for its for activity business, for the whole yeah. business really right and the the headquarters basically serve the periphery serve the business which is the periphery so this kind of notion that the responsibility and the influence the authority and the responsibility are united are coherent Mm. Uh, <laughs> and very essential to a democratic experience like we are in charge as citizens in our democratic societies we are in charge it's not mr biden or uh yeah mr schultz in germany for example yeah prisons are not in charge they just have certain duties 
representing us in certain matters and so on. So, yeah. Mm. So I think it means that the, people are in charge. In, in, in specific the people, people are in charge. Teams are in charge, right? Well, teams are. Well, t groups of people connected to a purpose to achieve a joint result to, you know, that that is beneficial for the society as a whole, right? I mean, this, this I think, was something I read in Drucker this morning in the, in the Orange Book. About yeah, this piece of Drucker about was, a, was a severe democratic, severely democratic thinker, of course, uh, with his history, oh. understanding fascism. Uh, and I, and I Nazi, had no... Fascism, yes. It, I, I had no idea. Again, I forget. I, I one of the papers that I kind of went through in, in preparing for today actually mentioned specifically that Mary Parker Follett was a mentor of Drucker, that they had interaction, and that again maybe maybe the maybe they're they're making some some spurious uh, connections, no, no, no. but it was no, no, no. it was specifically said in this particular God, get the paper out there. But in any case, we're, we are talking about you know, Mary Parker Follett coming from social action into yeah, sure. the, and, in and then applying that learning from social action yes. in my city of Cincinnati, by the way, um, and applying that into uh, organizational life and then having an influence on the, on those uh, individuals that we hold up as um, carriers of the torch and, and the, the lighting of the torch for the beta codex as in Peter Drucker. Um, you know, Deming, Akoff, and and all the all the figures that we hold up there. Yeah, they are, um, we're all very democratic thinkers. I mean, uh, just to to remind everybody uh, who might be listening or watching, um, uh, Follett was was a very thorough thinker on democracy. Kurt Levin, Peter Drucker, Deming, of course. <laughs> um, uh, all these, all all our heroes, uh, including Henry, people like Henry Minsberg, of course, were fervent. Mm -hmm. Uh, defenders of democracy and are fervent defenders of democracy. Yeah. And, and yeah. the, um, oh, go, go ahead. And we your... despise the fascists. <laughs> we, 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 we label them. We, def we, you know, okay. All right. Uh, the toxic, well, we can make them as toxic that we, we just well, we, we, I think authoritarianism sounds too soft, right? Uh, that's, that's why I, I well, so to use the term all all the time of course authoritarianism all forms and shapes of authoritarianism are bad right sure. well and, and again there there is a risk that yeah, you and i talk about this a lot we talk about this in, in our circle of folks who care about um interrelationships and and organ and the org physics of the, the three types of leadership and influence and social systems and all that stuff and it's easy to get really deep and say oh authoritarianism is of course it's evil bad awful okay now let's talk about the real stuff about what democracy means so it's yeah. it's important to remember the audience of people who are listening and who may who may think what are you talking authoritarianism are my business is authoritarian what do you mean yeah and and yeah. and what is the sort what is the word authoritarian it means that there's blind allegiance to authority and positional authority very specifically and that mm -hmm. that if if the authority to make decisions on behalf of the system on behalf of of others is is vested positionally as opposed to based on mastery or based on joint decision making it, that that is what we're talking about and we're talking about um yeah, we're talking about he has blind authority uh, blind how did you call it? Blind submission to authority. Well, there's there's de and there's deference. I call it, or, call it learned helplessness is part of it, I think. Yeah. Um, centralization of power, mm -hmm. the division between responsibility and uh, and value creation. Author accountability, responsibility, authority. Yeah. Are those words, it's important to have a clear distinction on what what we're talking about, yeah. Um, yeah. and that that what what that difference between power authority um and the decision making and because really and what does that mean what kind of do we have agreements for what we're doing are 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 those agreements crafted in a sense where there's dissent and there's integration and the i guess the the point is um that authoritarianism authority is in 
the in the word is that is as opposed to democracy you know yeah um, sure i mean command what, control or management the social uh, technology is based on the assumption that some lead and steer and decide and uh, others don't others are followers underlings uh, uh, well, right? it's the, it's ultimately the, everybody ends up losing and everybody ends up being a cog in the machine even the managers and executives and so on we're supposed to be leaders because speaking. because there's this separation there's this vertical again if you think top down that everyone thinks that there's the separation of accountability and responsibility yes. right yes. i am not i'm not accountable to you niels i'm accountable to to bob and yes. bob is accountable to mary who is accountable to uh to to whomever who is yes. and even at the ceo we've talked about this before too the ceo is accountable to the board is accountable to the the investors that if we said this before i think this is everybody has a boss everybody has a boss yeah and I, and, and, and that's and Mary followed, she said something like um the ultimate boss is the situation which <sighs> Yes. Oh, God. There, there's a quote. You're, you're bringing the quote up, um, and this yeah, is so a you find it, for, if you can find it. Uh, well, please. I think I can find it here. But the um, this to those of you who are out there listening know that we have. There's the two books. There's the What Would Deming Do? What Would Drucker Do? And I think we are um, are going to have a book of Mary Parker Follett quotes. If yes, if well, we there is a book of Mary Parker Follett quotes. Uh, it's I know it's edited by a French guy, Francois Heron. I have to look it up what it's called. Oh, Francois Eon, I think is his name. Ah, so the essential, there is a book of quotes. It's called The Essential Mary Parker Follett Ideas We Need Today. So if anybody's list, interested in a book, a book of quotes, one, one of those already exists. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so here, here I, this may be kind of, kind of a quote, but it may not end. And this is another thing. So the quote is, leader and followers mm, are both following the invisible leader the common purpose ah the common purpose yes mm -hmm. yes so and that and the law of the situation i think i think she expresses it differently uh in that, in that article. Yeah. yeah yeah and which is which is of course created to or connected to what we call value creation yeah if everybody yeah. serves value creation you do not have to serve bosses because right. you serve the client you end up having the client or the market as the boss Power of the situation, yeah. power of value creation, or the primer, the primacy of, of value creation. And then why have centralized steering? You do not need it. If you organize for flow, you do not have to um, uh, to manage it, as, as no. they famously said. Yeah. Because the the leader is the again, it's common, but the leader is the market, the leader is the situation. Yeah. Um the uh, the um oh i guess the, the language of leader personification of leader is as a, the leader being the authority right the personification of that yes. authority yes the and the static that's the end um, of organizational democracy very yeah, well it, put as as soon as you as soon as you fix the authority in a person or even in a small group of people that it, when it is fixed there is not dynamic it is not serving a common purpose that shifts in complexity at complexity yes yeah so very well put and, and i i think we're making a great case for democracy versus authoritarianism and yeah and it should so be, it should be the most logical thing it's just that there is not much reflection even about organizational democracy uh, there have been some uh, people uh, have been interested in including people like Todd Bridgman, of course, I think, who has. Uh, Ron, Ron Purser, again, Ron also. Purser, who, yeah, exactly. So so there are people, of course, talking about organizational democracy. It's not that, that it doesn't exist, but it's like more like uh, the minority report, right? Most, most researchers and practitioners still try to optimize organizational authoritarianism and command control. That's all organization mm. fashion, so to speak well, and, that, and and this democratic series by the way personally i have always been fascinated by the democratic spirit of beta organizations one great book about it is um joy at work 
by Dennis mm. Backe about AES, the energy company, American mm. energy company, 20,000 people at the time, were very much hyped in the 1990s. A uh, very democratic company, and there are several uh, uh, several hints at democratic principles in 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 that case, in that book as well. You know, uh, if you if you let workers decide more things than just the daily business, yeah, like mm. doing treasury, for example, there's an example in the book about a worker from a factory doing treasury, you know, calling a bank to get. Uh, cash flow, you know, cash flow, like a cash cash flow adjusted, you know. Uh, through. So why shouldn't why shouldn't ordinary workers do that shit as well? You know, why do you have to have academics and finance people to do that kind of work, which really which really doesn't require anything else, uh, doesn't require anything else than picking up the telephone and, and being authorized and doing the job? Well, there's oh. certain ta there's certain tasks that are 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 systemically complicated a level of complicatedness to them that that can be managed by rules and there are other tasks um, that require discernment that require thought that require um that require humanity right so but there's again this this goes into the idea of mastery okay no, not well. everybody can pilot a plane can we really <laughs> or, or not everybody surgery Exactly. That's not a good idea. But yeah. most other things they can be done by most people. You know, there are, there are exceptions from this. Yeah, like um, in a pharmaceutical company, there are qualifications that you have to. You know, you have to be very, very strictly qualified and certified to do certain to to sign well, certain. Certif certification does matter in certain situations. Exactly. When exactly. what's at stake? I think that's but so many thing. things can be done by everyone who cares enough and who is willing to take the responsibility. And, and I think, of course, this, this is one of the side effects, one of the collaterals of over specializations of silos thinking of functional division uh, or silo creating really silo building and narrowing people's uh, functional responsibility is that uh, all these silos create, you know, uh, they aggrandize, tend to aggrandize their work, their responsibilities, and make, make it over complicated and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and try to make access difficult and so on. It's, it's how Gate, gatekeeping. It's how we, how how we tick, right? But once you create functionally integrated cells, of course, you can you create a liberty, literally a li liberty and freedom to assume many roles. Again, there are exceptions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, compliance stuff, and so there, there are exceptions. But uh, but so many. Um, we just have this in a, in a case we are doing this discussion around. Okay, what are the things that can be integrated in periphery cells? What are the functions that should be there? From preparing the work to quality to hiring and stuff. What? Yes. Hiring. hiring. Hiring, of course. Exactly, exactly. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. So once you once you once you look at these functions one by one critically, what do they require? Why do we have specialists for, for those things? Um, why do why do we have why have we centralized those functions and taken away responsibility from people doing the work you know for those things? Mm -hmm. then well, why it's you you end up finding that people should be responsible for most of those things. Well, right? why why have we outsourced our mastery in in certain domains? Exactly. Yeah. Why? Many companies have outsourced way too much. Right? They should insource certain functions and activities again to have more authority to have more. Let's see, to, to have more adaptivity, yeah, to, to be more flexibility. Flexible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, you, I, I think it almost sounded like you were trying to avoid the A word. The, the A word is what? The, what is the agility? Word? The word of agile to be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's not it's not that it's, agility anymore. It's, but it's but it's an important attribute. I mean, to, yeah, I, I don't mean to, exactly. to be you know used as pejorative, but it is. It's important. Flexibility. But recruiting is really, you brought up recruiting. Recruiting is an excellent example. If you outsource recruiting, you're done. You cannot do it. <laughs> you you well, never get back, you know? So, uh, and, and you, 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 want the, you want the people who know the work to be intimately involved in hiring others who will aid them in doing the work and, and provide that level of, and this is another thing that, that, there's a there is a status hierarchy in terms of mastery you can't deny that a person is more masterful at a particular skill than a son than yes. someone who is not familiar with it yes and 
but the, but the is the idea and that's mastery based authority right so that's kind of authoritarian in a very micro way but that's the exertion of that power as an authority figure that i i am great at using this tool to produce this result you're new at that you want to do that you are part of this group that we are connected to this joint purpose to create value for these people and we wish to grow our mastery that that it's not a win lose situation it's shared authority that uh, yeah. that that skill does not degrade yes. when it is shared. This is social learning also. Yeah. And we're talking yes. about that, yes. that, that if, that if, and, and also again, it's another beta principle. And to um, mastery applies the, what I call the Superman principle or the Superman motto out of great power comes great responsibility. Mastery mm -hmm. is a power that Spider-Man that's, that's Spider-Man. I don't know. Did I say Superman? <laughs> I it's, meant, it's Superman. I know. I meant Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. You Out of great power comes great responsibility. So people with mastery, of course, need to, they are responsible to themselves and to everyone to use their powers um, responsibly and to promote, uh, to, to, to not abuse them, but to, um, uh, to, you know, to, to, mastery. to, to wield that power ethically. Exactly. Ethically, responsibly, humanely. And yeah. and this idea of well, well, yeah, I'm I'm responsible for this uh, skill that I have and using it or this tool or or what have you whatever regard yeah. but I am responsible for my use my own action and sure. and for to use it for value creation in this for value creation, uh, uh, also, value creation. Uh, also I think and then this is where where the the leadership that exists between people is in that I am. I am accountable not only to myself, yes. but I am accountable to you who are here with me in this moment. We are sharing this responsibility that we are working together in joint purpose to create value. Yes. And I mean, this is, wants to be you applied in the with each other for each other spirit of collaboration and working and value creation. Exactly. And this, and this is. Again, we, we go straight into um, the writings, teachings, um, and uh, of Mary Parker Follett, and and I think we in the title of the episode is is the the Follettian school, and that well, what's the Follettian school? There's not yeah, really a school but, in, in this video cast. We never talked about really properly about the uh, the Follettian school, right? Yeah, well, what's the what's the opposite of the Follettian school? Right? Yes, it's it I again I will put it out. It's the Taylorist school, um, and the Taylorism separated from Fred Taylor, who was a man of his time for his time, and his teachings were abused and accelerated to unethical levels by the social technology of management. Yes. Um, but the Philadelphian school, it's it's I, I can't say that that the Philadelphian ideas are not taught because i've seen enough research papers yeah, and they they are taught but there's there's some there's a, um, friction about bringing those principles of philatian management if i could use that word mm -hmm. into organizations at at a large scale meaning just many organizations working in a philatian fashion that there's I, I don't I can't I don't know the reason why is that 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 there's a there's a unfamiliarity with what it feels like to work in this way. And it's and I don't know. I don't know what 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 do you what do you think is is oh. a barrier or oh, obstacle to it's, it's again how we think about people at work. The old it's the, uh, the old pattern, the old theme that if we assume that people are dumb and lazy and foolish and irresponsible at work then there is no way to construct organizational democracy is uh, democracy it's no there's no way to apply beta codex principles or the Follettian idea of organizing if you think that people are abominable minions that theory, that's just douglas i mean another of the heroes heroes uh, of the the influencers influential figures of the beta codex movement being douglas mcgregor and the belief of that, but the mindset about people in organizations being incapable or capable and having possibility. And I, it, and I love quotes, but I don't 
often remember exactly <laughs> who generated them, but there's um, treat a person as they are and they will behave as they are. But treat a person as they could be, they will behave as they could be. I don't know if that's Goethe who said that in that way or... I'm not sure either. But yeah, again, I'm, I'm kind of taking... that. We, if we think of man as human, treat a man as he is, he will behave as he is. Treat a man as he could be and he will behave as he could be. Um, and which is which is a pretty beta principle uh, of of treating people with respect for and showing respect for their skill, their mastery, and respect for their human dignity. You know, and this is if that's not at the core of how you um, uh, sponsor your organization, you have if if you as a generator of uh, a value creating entity. You know, I'm trying not to say leader of an organization because that that's the language that, but this is what I mean. If someone who is an authority and has created something, if we might that call him a sponsor, we, we might call it such a yeah, person, yeah. Person. There's such an individual who opens the space for an organization to become democratic, we call them a sponsor, right? In open space yeah. beta, it's a word we use in open space beta approach to transformation. Yeah. And it's again, the partially again, the connection to the uh, to the initial work of Harrison Owen, who passed away this weekend, um, is is about that opening space. And Another you said it perfectly. True, true Democrat, by the way, Harrison. Owen. Oh my goodness! And and he traveled in, in his travels through the world. He went into the hot zones. Um, he had a many. Uh, he was involved heavily in the um, South African democratic movement. He also spent a lot of time in the Middle East. Uh, in this, I believe in the seventies, again, my, my open space, um, uh, folks will, will certainly uh, come in and correct on that if they, they see this, but yeah, opening space for democratic involvement, participation, honest and honest conversation that is, uh, this generative of insight and connection that and, and i think you've experienced it in open spaces i have experienced it in open spaces that that the story of a day and it's is you start out with this discomfort you go into the center of the circle you you say hey i'm my team does this i'm i want to do that i want to go there and talk about it and you're inviting people to participate and there's tension there's there's dissent and all this kind of stuff that happens and then at the end of the day, people have connected so deeply, absent the authority and that baggage around it, someone else telling you what to do, is, is that you deeply connected as human. And there's joy in that work at the end of it. And how beautiful is that? And who would not want to be connected to that? Um, and, and, and again, that's, that's just my view of the world. And I know that there's, there are people all along the spectrum of cognitive uh, preferences and proclivities and that not everybody wants to s go to the center of a circle and talk right some people don't like that but there are ways to engage everyone in participation of a process and creation i think you, you've talked about that the open space that happens in open space beta it's not always this this or maybe not ever in your case i don't know you can tell me about that it's not the traditional sit in a circle uh, put up a bulletin board open a marketplace get to work that, those steps but it's it's different and it is accepting very democratically of all people and and i i, I was i had it on my list of things to talk about that i had to bring up bosch because i lo love that that came in is that everybody counts or nobody counts i mean what more democratic principle to to bring forward? exactly every everybody counts or nobody counts and that that if we bring that principle to the organization, then then you open the space for true connection and and compassion and all, all that kind of airy fairy stuff that people that's the soft stuff. But that soft stuff is we all we all have it, and it's important that if we want to do the hard stuff of creating value and having a financial transaction to support further creation of that value. It's important that we acknowledge each other's humanity. And, yeah, uh, and I mean, this is what you're just uh, saying. It connects nicely into if you want to bring about an organization and an organization democracy, a democratic organization, the the change approaches you choose must also embed this 
they must also be profoundly democratic. You cannot bring about um, decentralization and organizational democracy with a command and control approach to change, like change management, uh, traditional sorts, variants, you know, steered, planned change doesn't work. We're going to drive change. We're we're going to we're going to crush the resistance, and uh, and we're going to implement this. Thing. Even talking about status quos and resistance to change, those are yeah. undemocratic notions. Uh, well, unrealistic notions, really. Of how that's true. We had we had an episode about the status quo. And what do we mean by the status quo? It is again, it's part of the language that needs to be uh, dissolved into. When you talk about the status quo, what are you really talking about? What's underneath that? What what usually is usually it means managers, right? The leaders. That means the status quo. Other dumb shit people. The people. Yeah. Those other those people other people. Me. That's what status quo means, no? Well, what other people other than me? You know, I'm I'm this creative wizard, right? And everyone else is some dumb idiot. Uh, that's kind of what that, that well, and I think status quo is that things as they are the system operating in the way that it is operating it that and i think stability is one thing we haven't even really talked about stable systems this is something that came up from some of the systems thinking reading that i've been doing and trying to get into that deeper is that the sense of a system operating in flow um at a kind of flow even with obstructions that the flow isn't as fast or as productive of value as it could be but this this state of of systemic action, right? But irritate it, <laughs> you know. That's the point. You want to irritate that 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 system in this state to be a more decentralized, flowing, grooving, swinging system, as opposed to a, a mechanical, a mechanistic, uh, authoritarian, dead system. So. Yes, very nice. I'm happy. I'm feeling good. Have we solved the world's problems? Totally. Totally. This is so. it. This is the episode. This is this <laughs> is we this solved, is the micro. We have finally solved all the problems. Well, oh, I think right. we have well, a bit of ground about democracy of work. Um, yeah. Um, um, the, Taylor's and Folletti. The the one thing I I wrote down that we didn't talk about, maybe we talked about a little bit, but I thought we were going to get into with great power comes great responsibility, that what are the, if, let, let us assume, this is maybe a good way to, to land. If we assume that a democratic organization that through our efforts to intervene in an existing system, we have created a democratic organization, decentralized, swinging, how might we, or what are the guardrails that need to be in place to ensure the survival of that democratic system? And, and that, that one, one of the guardrails or one of the dangers that I saw and in, in the reading, and this is, again, I'll turn it over to you, is that there is a risk of a charismatic leader um, using their sense of persuasion and influence to create compelling narratives that will say, elect me to make the decisions. I I have the mastery, whether they're bullshitting or not. Um, but that that charismatic leader, um, it, and again, I'm using that with, with the scare quotes on it, yeah. is that's a danger. And that what what are the guardrails to that? And I think some some might call the orange man an example of that. Others might call, you know, even back to Kennedy. He was accused of being that kind of charismatic leader. We follow this good-looking guy. He's awesome, you know. So that's a risk. The risk, a risk of democracy, is this charismatic, charismatic figure. So, um, yes. I mean, can any democratic, decentralized beta organization be turned transformed into a command and control? centralized authoritarian organization yes uh, it doesn't need more than one i i, I use humorously i like to say it it only requires one asshole. <laughs> i knew you were going to say that i knew it <laughs> yeah one one evil person at the top can be enough with the sufficient authoritarian um, uh, authority one person can be enough to uh, 
transform a decentralized organization into a command and control organization. And that has happened often enough. Uh, many organizations become command and control. They turn to command and control. They turn to decentralization and author organizational authoritarianism. And most organizations, I would say, they become command and control be unwillingly, mm. you know. Or unknowingly. Unknowingly, default. yes. Yeah. Sidewinds instability, as we call this phenomenon. There's this side mm. an organization suffers a crisis and becomes centralized. You know, you create the departments, the, top, the controls, the cost management, and boom. Yeah, and that can be very quick. Can happen over the course of decades. I mean, all the German companies, for example, if we if you take Bosch or Siemens, we know by the Bosch Group founder that he had very uh, democratic uh, ideals about organizing. Yeah, he was a very beta thinker, but. Uh, once organizations grow, the tension, the crises usually lead to some form of centralization. Or there might be just one asshole joining and, you know, bringing in all the command control bullshit. Yeah, so yeah. this happens all the time. It can happen to any organization. It happens in uh, societies as well. I mean, uh, Polish democracy has been corrupted and uh, mistreated badly by just one um, Let's say uh, one 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 um, uh, cycle of governance by the PIS party, P I S, I think. Mm. PIS. That's an appropriate name <laughs> for that party. <laughs> also, of course, uh, left wing populists. Um, so it's easy to destabilize uh, destabilize a democracy. That's what I'm trying to say. It's e relatively easy to destroy a democracy. To create a democracy is much harder because you need to instill citizenry and. Uh, education, of course, and democratic spirit in, an, in a populace to, to, to sustain, to create and sustain uh, uh, an organization. I think the American mm. case, again, is so convincing. I recommend movies like Selma, mm. one of the yeah. movie about the work of um, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, those are very enlightening um, movies, I think, about the struggle for a more democratic democracy, you know, a more sustainable mm. and more rounded democracy and how the, the fight in this case for against segrega segregation was essential to bringing more democratic uh, uh, process yeah. structure system process system yeah. Too. yeah 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 um, it's, it's it's never easy it's never easy no. of course, well, it's, it's, it's easy nothing it's nothing worth nothing worthwhile is ever easy i've heard that before but um, of course in organizations and companies that's much easier because you can with with the methods we already talked about, open space beta, involving all the willing, uh, you know, yeah. using open space to begin and end, the or to open and close the transformation process. So to speak. Yeah. And, uh, and those I, are very effective measures, and, and it, it doesn't take more than a few months, very important to keep in mind. To, right? to do that initial set of flips, right? And I think this also comes to ritualization of the, 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 the organizational breadth, you know, if you institute a an organizational ritual of an open space every six months, I mean, this comes from Daniel Mezik's work in the in the Open Space Agility Handbook, and that 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 we've adopted here in, in Open Space Beta. But it is this is this is how how things are done here. That because we have a principle of democratic involvement and participation, and and we are a Falletian organization, right? And, and assuming we are we and come into it, and that's the then the risk of sponsorship when sponsorship changes, then the sponsorship of the principal or the ownership of the principal is abandoned. I think that that's what you're talking about. That that some some asshole comes in and says, "I don't I don't give two shits about uh, about democracy. I want to I I need to up the share price this quarter, you know," and then drops a grenade in the middle of of this and 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 disrespects the yes. the principles and does that so yes. so that's the the risk of a sponsorship change and i think this yeah there's again that's but organizations where, like 50, 59 minutes i mean that's a, that's another thing what what does but um, some some companies brilliant companies like toyota or handelsmark can have managed or even w wl gore for example they have managed to yeah. sustain their decentralized democratic models of organizing for decades through several CEO ships, so to speak. So and, it is totally, that, it's totally possible. 
it's possible and it and it is indicative of that um by the way those organizations the, the, have rooted democracy in organizational principles in structure in the, the principles I'm, that's what i was, was going to say is, is about the the principles of organizational democracy and that that to respect and honor those and keep those in mind and um in in your heart and mind body and spirit so oof um would would uh, some topics for next week uh, yes uh, maybe come up i'm i was and th if those of you out here who are, are watching now please feel to pop something in the youtube comment send us either a message on linkedin or join the big codex group on linkedin all those kinds of things please let us know um mm -hmm. what you're curious about if you if you think we are totally full of shit and have no idea what we're talking about i want to hear about it because we what better thing to talk about? Yeah. By the way, there's another wonderful book just for to, to finalize from my point, from my side. Sure. Uh, there's this wonderful book by Peter Kostenbaum and Peter Block, Confronting Our Fronting. Freedom, which I yes. think is a brilliant uh, primer on organizational democracy, yeah. even though it doesn't force the topic so much. It's so much about individual freedom and the responsibility and their consequences that come in it, but it's totally uh, mm. about democracy really uh, highly recommended for anybody who's who might feel inspired to read more about it and it's it's really beautiful fantastic fantastic book very recent yeah. i think it was published last year so very really yeah uh, and peter block is um is a fantastic uh, thinker who has influenced the work of the beta Co codex as well Yes. Um, I would again be remiss if didn't mention two of the of Mary Parker Follett's books, Creative Experience and The New State, which um, are widely available um, essential works of, of hers, as well as I, you mentioned the uh, other books. You, hey, Google Works, uh, DuckDuckGo, whatever you want to search, Mary Parker Follett books, you got them. Um, I, I think the topics that we've brought up some really interesting topics here sponsorship i think is one that would be be interesting to go with yes. i think mariana mazzucato's work we talked about that our friend peter, peter pearl who contributed i remember he saying something about how the mission economy book had something to do with sponsorship and and it, it was like a, a mm -hmm. almost a constitution of great sponsorship it's fantastic yeah. sponsorship systems thinking I, I i think that's something we be willing to explore and ache off and that kind of stuff um so i've got some some juice around this uh niels if 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 there's something you want to offer of, of no, get, in, get in touch everybody get in touch uh see you again soon let's discuss let's make the world more beta let's create a more beta world be more much. beta thank you much all right hey everybody Thank you so much for your precious gift, for the precious gift of your time and attention. I'm Ryan Erickson, signing off from this place in the Betaverse. See you next week. <laughs>